What's up, everyone? Happy Sunday. Welcome to another Stock Market Review. I'm Brian Weber. Hope you all had a great trading week. And uh, I'm sure you know that the markets are approaching all-time highs, especially the S&P 500. It's only about 0.27% away from taking out that all-time high back in, I believe, September of last year. So, and we can see that the tech sector is still grinding higher. And we'll cover the, the technical details and what the chart's doing uh, after I go over like some of the things to look for this week. And I think this week, this is it's going to be a little bit more volatile, especially on Wednesday, depending on what Jerome Powell says about the federal funds rate and what his opinion is on the economy, especially the GDP numbers that came out last Friday. That I believe the actual was about 3.2% growth and beat by about a percent. So the economy is doing a lot better than analysts are expecting. So I'm sure Jay Powell is who, what I call him, Jerome Powell. Uh, he's probably going to touch on that a little bit, I would say, on Wednesday in the press conference. So this week, the main things I'd be looking at would be, uh, one, the federal FOMC meeting and federal funds rate uh, this Wednesday. It's gonna be at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's 2 p.m. if you're on the East Coast. So remember that Jerome Powell stated that he will not be raising interest rates at all the rest of this year and may, maybe not much in 2020, maybe one or two rate hikes. And currently the, the interest rate is at 2.5%. So what you wanna look for is I mean, if you're not going to, I wouldn't trade before that, that time and let the market digest the information, you know, unless you're willing to set up a bracket trade around the range. Usually leading up to the Fed day, the, the price action will be trading towards flat. In other words, it'll be trading towards the open because that's just traders being indecisive, not knowing what to expect. But lately it's been very bullish because pretty much the Fed's been saying the same thing every time. Or continue to be patient and see how the economy evolves. Um, just want to make sure that when whatever J Powell is going to say, whatever the Fed's going to say, you want it to be along the same lines that it has been the past few times if you want to remain bullish in the stock market. Anything that veers off and is not dovish, it's more hawkish and they're hinting at raising interest rates or they're a little they're, they're not uh, confident in the economy. They think it's growing too fast or they see they're a little worried about certain areas. Then the market might get a little bit more volatile and you might see a pullback. Um, still looking for a pullback in 2866 in the SPX or the S, uh, ES, I would say the S&P 500 futures. But right now it doesn't look like that's going to happen because we're still in a pretty solid uptrend. So that's what I'd be looking for on the Fed on Fed day and Wednesday. So if you're not willing to, you know, I, I wouldn't be in a position before that meeting for the, the rate hike is announced. But if you're, if you're going to trade that day, just know it's going to be a little bit more volatile and the moves might be bigger. We might have a breakout higher to the upside if all is well, or we could have, or we could have a pullback of some sort. So just be patient and wait for, wait for that news to come out and the market to, to digest it before you decide to enter in a trade. To touch on another big thing that's this week, we have Apple and Google reporting earnings. I believe Google is after the market closes tomorrow. And then Apple, I don't recall, I have it in the, the notes below, I think it is Wednesday though. It typically is on a Wednesday. So what those companies report on earnings is gonna be a pretty good deciding factor whether or not the market's gonna keep going higher or not. So pay attention to those two companies when they report earnings. And then, also, um, not really anything that's affecting the market too much, but it is a reason for the market to continue going higher if Trump and President Xi reach a, a deal, the USA and China trade talks, that USA officials are actually going to Beijing this week to continue the trade talks. And Trump did say that, the, that they are going very well. So look for a potential deal to be reached by the end of May at the earliest. Um, it could be earlier, but that's what everyone's talking about. That's what Trump's talking about. So just pay attention to that because if that deal is reached, it could be a reason to push the market higher 
and for the SPX to break that 3,000 mark that everyone keeps talking about. So I, that's pretty much everything that I'd be looking for this week that could majorly move the market in either direction. There are a bunch of other economic events, but I put them in the description below, and I would pay attention to you know, the ISM manufacturing PMI. I think there's some job numbers on Friday. Those are the bigger ones too that you gotta pay attention to, but the focus is on this Wednesday, the FOMC meeting, and then the Apple and Google earnings, and then the other big companies that are reporting. So with that said, I just wanna jump into the technical review, and let's cover the charts and what I'm looking for in the market this week. All right, guys, let's take a look at the ES first. This is the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract. So like I said in the, in the intro to this video that the, this ES, the S&P 500, is about 0.27% away from hitting this all-time high back in September of last year, which is 29.47. And based on Friday's price action, we had a nice reset on Wednesday and Thursday to test this uptrend line. You can see if I zoom in just a little bit, it's drawn from, I mean, you could actually draw it from this pivot point right here to there. It actually would have a lower, I would keep that lower trend line here, but even this closer pivot here based on some volume coming in to the low of this candle, which is about 28.90. And that, that trend line is holding. And then we have another one just below there. And we're also tracking the nine day EMA very well we're closing above it every time since we broke out right here back at 2820 area and we're just continuing to grind higher and test that area we every time we come back and test it we're closing above it so that's something that i would look for for this trend line to keep holding to remain bullish and closing above this nine day ema as well on the daily time frame and if i zoom out here you can see that we do have this uptrend line right here, which is, I'm looking for us to test that this week. And if you look at, I actually have a target of 29.52. If you take this, I believe it's, let me see. Let's see if it's this pivot to there, yeah. So we first hit this first target and then based on this move back here, we were consolidating, chopping around a little bit. We we're pushed higher than had a nice reset and we, we maintain the uptrend right here. I am looking for 29.52 this week for our first target, which should align with uh, even 29.58, somewhere in that area should align with the top of this trend line. We might go a little bit less or a little bit higher. It just depends on what happens on Wednesday and how Apple and Google will report their earnings coming up. And actually Apple is reporting earnings on Tuesday after the close. I just checked my notes. so. Sorry about that uh, mistake earlier, but um, that's what I'm looking for on ES. If we do lose this uptrend, I will look for the test of this uptrend and then come back and test 2900. But um, really still looking for a, a, a test maybe down to the 50 day SMA, which I think will catch up to this 2866, 2865 eventually. But right now, I still think we're, we're pretty bullish. Any dip is being bought especially in the mornings when they sold off. The typical pattern I saw this week was a flush in the morning. They would sell off and then they would buy up into the afternoon and have a nice strong close. The only thing I don't like is that we, when the market reopened for the last 30 minutes before the futures market closed, we did sell a little bit and we did close below 29.40. So we do got to get back above 29.42 and hold that area to have a chance to go higher to test the upper part of this channel. So let's take a look at the NQ. NQ is in a continuing to make higher highs and higher lows. We're well above the, the all-time high back in September right here, which is 72.28.75. So we're more than 100 points higher than that. So we stopped short on Thursday, just short of 7,900, but just like the ES, we are holding this nice uptrend line right here, and we're holding the nine day EMA. We're closing above it. So I do think that the, the chance for the NASDAQ to go higher is very likely, especially if, uh, 
Apple and Google report positive earnings. I do think breaking through that 7,900 area is most likely going to happen this week, especially if the S&P 500 continues to push higher and makes a new all-time high. I think there's really no resistance after that, and there's no reason for the market to take a dip at, at the moment. So I think the market will continue just to, to float higher unless the Fed comes out and is a little bit more hawkish, then we probably will lose this uptrend or at least have some kind of volatility come in. But I'd say as long as we hold this uptrend, it will still remain bullish. And there's quite significant upside still on the on the NQ right here because you can see there's a lot of open space up to 8,000 right here. Um, if I were to take a look at a weekly chart, I mean, there's a lot of green candles in a row and there's a lot of volume coming in here. So people are still buying. I can actually get rid of this, that downtrend line. So if I take a look at the move that we had here from all time high, the previous all time high to where we bottomed in December, this might give you an idea of where we're going. 8,200 area. So, and that's also the, near this uptrend line right here. So, but like I said, if we lose the uptrend, I would be a little bit more bearish. Just got to wait and see what the Fed does and how Apple and Google are going to report earnings. But if all is well, market will continue higher. If not, look for a reset, um, probably come back. If we lose this uptrend, I would look for a reset back here to the 7523.5, or 75.50 area, which could probably be the 50 day SMA once that catches up. Let's take a look at YM, so Dow Jones futures contract. Dow Jones, a little, it's not too far off from its all-time high, but it's not as strong as the other two bigger indices, the ES and the NQ. So we do have to get above, we did lose this little uptrend line and we lost the nine-day EMA, but there's still an uptrend line right here. If you look, take these two pivots, these two candles right here, it's tracking the 50-day SMA really well. I'm actually going to remove this downtrend line. It's tracking that. We're still in a nice parallel channel. So there's support down here on this trend line, probably just above 26,000 is going to be strong support. And that's the 50 day SMA as well. And definitely have to get above this pivot to 26,500, 510 area, get above there. And it's got a hold to continue going higher to test this 26,820, which is this, uh, the high, this previous high before we made the all time high back in uh, September. This September, this is October for the Dow Jones. So looking for the for that to happen. If we can't push higher, if we lose this 26,270 area, this low on Thursday, I would look for a little bit more of a reset down to 26,000 area, just above there, maybe even the 50 day SMA. But a lot really determines on how the bigger 20 companies in the Dow Jones move because Boeing is in here and every time Boeing doesn't do so well that there's some divergence and the Dow ends up being a little bit more weak or strong depending on what what Boeing is doing. So that's probably good. If you trade the Dow, it's probably a good idea to pay attention to what Boeing is doing. So let's take a look at the RTY. RTY still can't get above this this line I have here, the 1602.1, but we are in this up wedge right here. I actually did buy some calls into the close here on the, on the IWM, which is just the ETF of the Russell. So really, I, I'll get out of this trade if we lose this uptrend line. And I do like that we, we did have this downtrend line here that I drew this past week and we did break out of it. And we we're holding above, I wanna see us hold above these previous highs or closes. So hold that 1590 area. I don't want to see us lose that. Maybe a retest is in order or even the open of this candle, like the 1588 half, somewhere in there. So if that holds, I think going to the top of this channel, potentially breaking that 1600 area, maybe even a potential breakout higher because the Russell's lagging quite a bit. And there's some significant volume that came in last week on the bullish side. So if we can break this 1600 area, I think getting the 1625, 1627 will be pretty easy. 
But if we can't hold this uptrend line here, we're most likely not going to hold. If we lose 1560, this is really my line in the sand, 1560 area, I think coming back to the 1530 is definitely possible. And I think it will, we'll probably have a bigger sell-off if this, if this level is not going to hold because we are coiling for a move up right now. And that's what I think the market is expecting. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on Wednesday with the Fed meeting. But it looks good so far as long as that uptrend holds. Let's take a look at gold. So gold had some nice buying volume came in here the last four days of last week, especially on Friday, pushing through some resistance that I talked about in the last video for the review of last week's for the, yeah, the review video of last week. So right now what is happening is that we're retesting the backside of this trend line breakdown. So as long as we hold this 1285 area, I think gold might actually grind higher and you can see we're in this down channel. You got the lower trend line here, lower trend line there, or upper trend line there. And then you have this, we have this little uptrend here from the higher lows that we were making. So medium term, we're in a downtrend and short term, we're in an uptrend. So as long as this continues to hold, we probably will continue up to the top of this channel here. And I think as we approach these all time highs and as the market continues to go higher, I think people are going to start hedging with gold just in case something happens. You know, I think the ES could definitely hit 3,100 or even, it, I think it could definitely hit 3,000, even 3,100 before we have a significant pullback because that is the weekly FIB target that I have. It's around 3,100. But I do think the reason why we're seeing this bullish volume with the markets going higher is because people are probably hedging against their long positions just in case we have an unexpected sell-off. So I would look for gold to continue higher as long as it can break above the high of Friday. I mean, you have a lot of resistance around the 1290 to 1292. If it can break above there, even 1295, you could probably see test at 1300 in this 50 day SMA in this downtrend line here. So if we do lose this uptrend line here, I would have 1285 and then 1280 area. If those aren't going to hold as support, then more than likely gold will continue down to this FIB target that I have of 1265 area and lose this uptrend line. So let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil actually sold off last week. Oh, I mean, yeah, oversupply. Actually, because the crude oil inventory report, I remember it coming out on last Wednesday and it was a huge, huge uh, miss, I would say. Like, I believe there was like 5 million more barrels in inventory and supply than expected, which caused the market to sell off I don't believe the same day, but the next two days we're selling off quite a bit. So yeah, like the forecast on Wednesday last week was 0.9 million and the actual was 5.5 million. So it was a huge, uh, more or less glut of oil supply that caused for a significant pullback in the, in the energy market. So there was some buying that came in just above 62. I'm still looking for this uptrend to be tested because it looks like, I mean, there's a lot of volume that came in here. Most of it's selling because you can see there's a little wick at the bottom of this candle. This consolidation should hold on a closing basis. I mean, 6180, I was looking for a retest and might actually get that this week. And there's going to be a golden cross soon on the 50 going above the 200. And there's going to be, I mean, there's a nice up channel right here and there's a lot of support around right here. So if we lose this uptrend line right here, I'd be a little bit more bearish and watch out with your bullish trades on crude oil. So I do think we'll bounce. We should bounce somewhere in there around the 200 day SMA and 50 day SMA. So pay attention to these lower consolidation areas. This one's around 6170, 6180. If that doesn't hold, you're more than likely going to go back and test this top of this consolidation range here, which is the upper trend line. Um, you do, we do have to get it back above 63, but there's going to be a lot of resistance around 63.50. You can see it's the open or the close and the open up these candles right here. So right now it, it does look like crude wants to go lower, but let's see how that that trend line holds that support when it when and if it's tested. So then the last one I'm going to look at is the dollar. The dollar actually 
broke out last week. And I mentioned this for a while. And I think a lot of people were calling for the dollar to break out. I mean, it, it, it's just a classic wedge pattern. We're making higher highs right here on the daily, or excuse me, higher lows and lower highs. And we're in a dominant uptrend actually on the weekly and daily time frames. This was the fourth time we we're testing this area too. See back here one, two, three times around the 97.70. And we did test it here on the 23rd, which I believe was Tuesday. Yeah, and finally pushed through it the next day on Wednesday. And we hit the FIB target that I had, looked above it a little bit by a couple ticks, um, or I say a couple points, and then um, sold off a little bit. So now we have a doji here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we come back and retest the breakout that, and this nine day EMA right here, 9770. So, because this is a look, but we did make a higher high from Thursday's candle on Friday. So it is a look above and some selling. So a retest isn't out of the question. And we can see we're still in this nice steep uptrend. So as long as that holds, we'll probably come back, make an S curve and probably go higher. But if it doesn't hold, then you got to look lower to look for the backside of this trend line right here. And then these fibs in this range right here. So that's all I had for the, the overall markets. I didn't cover any of the equities this week, but I did share, if you're on my email newsletter, I am sharing some like top 10 sticker uh, tickers that I'm looking at for bullish swing trades this upcoming week. So if you want to get on my email list, just let me know, send me a comment, drop me a comment on this video, or you can uh, send me an email at contact at and I'll be more than happy to add you. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just go ahead and click my logo that's popping up right now. And I will be back next week with another market review video, maybe cover some more equities because I know I didn't do it this week. Just wanted to make this one a quick review, but uh, trade well and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.